over there. And so I've said for years that the budget is the most important document or documents that you pass. It's a primary tool that you can use to set the direction of the state. And it's really the blueprint. And you, you do, as legislators, have the power of the purse. So why transparency then? Because real accountability for tax dollars is not possible without adequate and timely details on what is purchased, why, and for what results. Now, one of the other pieces of model legislation that ALEC has is the 72-hour timeout period. Now, think about this for a minute. If in your state you could not vote in the budget, but notice it was on a public website for 72 hours, what would happen? There goes a lot of those bridges to nowhere. <laughs> the visibility, the public coming in and giving input. But if you don't have that type of budget visibility, the budget writing process suffers as a majority of the lawmakers, and more importantly, the public are left in the dark. And I just recall a recent session in the Washington State Legislature where they told the legislators, well, the, you know, the budget document hasn't been printed yet, but you know, we, we really have to get it out of here so the Senate can vote on it. We go to Congress committee, just trust us, you know, just vote for it and, and pass it. And then you have the problems that occur. Uh, but that's when we get all these bridges to nowhere and other problems. Today, we have really an exciting panel here. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be on panels with uh, the Honorable Morris McGee in the past, and, and he's great, and I'll tell you, I just wish he could be the czar in this country for a while and do what he did in New Zealand and Washington State, and I love some of the stories of some of the agencies that he took over and what he accomplished in New Zealand. Uh, and so Dr. Uh, Morris McGee is going to come up here. He turned to Makeda Center in 1997 as a distinguished visiting scholar. Uh, following his career as a New Zealand member of Parliament, and I think the first time I heard uh, Maurice was up at uh, Nova Scotia many years ago. <laughs> That's about 15, 20 years ago. Uh, but prior to his arrival in the United States, he led a, a very ambitious and extremely successful effort to um, restructure New Zealand's public sector and to revitalize its stagnant economy in the 1984 to 1994 period. As director of the Government Accountability Project at Mercata Center, uh, Mr. J has been traveling the country and the world, sharing the lessons of his practical experience with policymakers in the United States. And he spoke to us in Alec in the past. Uh, the challenge I want to put out for you today is to implement what he's about to present. Thank you, Bob, for that great introduction, and thank you for the work that you do with the Evergreen Foundation in the state of Washington. Uh, I'm really enthused having listened to the presentation at lunchtime today because it's great to hear people in politics from time to time who base their decisions and their commitments on a bunch of principles. And Bob's one of those people, and so is Tim Pawlenty, who I've worked with in the past. So that brightened my day for a start, so I could probably sit there now and leave you all in the field that you could go away feeling good about things, but I'm probably going to ruin it by doing the rest of my presentation. Uh, I entitled this Accountability and Transparency, a Public Good. And I do that deliberately because sometimes when we think about these things, particularly if we're part of administrations and legislatures, we tend to think about them in terms of what's the benefit to the government. Uh, this a phrase that precedes your founding documents that I think is just wonderful. And it says, we the people. Well, we the people own that darn government, and it should actually be talking to us. We the people are entitled to have that government accountable to us. Uh, and what we should be getting is the information that tells us whether that's a good or a bad job. If we have accountability, or more an open, transparent government, then what we build is greater trust. The absence of that accountability, we get less trust. If you don't believe me, look at Washington, D.C. Congress at the moment has the lowest public um, approval rating in history, 11%. It was bad at the last election in 2006 when it was 17%. Why? Because we don't trust what's happening. We don't trust what's happening because in most cases we don't know. The greater the transparency of government processes and procedures, the better the decisions and the better uh, and the less the possibility for corrupt practice. So what we're talking about is that it's the people's government, they have a right to know. 
It's only in those circumstances where there's a national interest that legislators or administration should decide that information shouldn't be released to the public. They're extremely rare. When we publish, we need to publish it in a way that we actually can use and understand the information. And my colleague Jerry is going to talk to you about some of the exciting things that you can do with information when it's published in the right way. He's a geek, I'm just a farmer from down under so I don't understand that stuff. Uh, but I've had some experience in trying to sort out some of the problems. And we need to know things like what results costs. We need to have a set of real accounts. You can look at the accounts of the United States uh, of America put together by your treasury, you have no idea whatsoever, even if you're an expert, of what the situation is as far as the viability of the United States government. Best guess at the moment is that you have negative net worth of about 67% of GDP. Not anywhere in your accounts that you'll actually find that information. So what is accountability? It's good to start off by actually defining things because then we know what we're talking about. And often we think we know what something like accountability means, but when we start to have to articulate it, we find that we're a bit confused about it. Interesting, accountability is, one, is a word that's found mainly only in the English language. Won't surprise you that the French don't have a comparable word for accountability. <laughs> uh, now here's something that I think is important. Transparency is a component of accountability. It doesn't stand alone. In the absence of transparency, there can be no accountability. So, you know, if your wife doesn't know what you're doing, she can't hold you accountable for it. Um, if you're a pastor uh, at your parish, you have to be open and transparent with them, otherwise they can't make those kind of decisions. If you're a legislator, the same applies to your relationship between uh, the work that you do as a legislator and your constituency. So, okay, what's this transparency thing? Transparency, we define, is a process that requires us to disclose, fully and truthfully, <coughs> our performance to those who are entitled to know. There's a few, few components in there that are pretty important. It's not a matter of choice. It's a matter of duty. Particularly if you're on public life, it's a matter of duty. Uh, you have to disclose fully and truthfully uh, I spent a good bit of my early years in, um, in convents being taught by nuns. If anybody's told you that they're nice, soft, caring people, they're wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and we certainly knew what all the different forms of telling lies were. Uh, and all of them were bad. Uh, but there are about five different ways in which you can misrepresent the truth, and all of them are wrong when it comes to transparency. So what would it be like if we actually tried to define good government? A government that makes budget decisions based on results. What's that mean? Spending public monies on things that don't work is grossly irresponsible. Not knowing whether these activities work is even more grossly irresponsible. And as legislators, you have to demand that you have that information in front of you before you can even make those decisions. In the absence of it, you should do a policy. Zero. Uh, and then somebody has to provide the information that will persuade you that you should allocate monies. A government that is honest and truthful with future generations by requiring intergenerational reporting on current policy. This is a trend we're seeing around the world, world but more and more governments are making decisions now that have extremely onerous obligations on future generations. We need to make that transparent. And I'll talk a little bit about what some countries are doing about that in the future. So that truthfulness and integrity requires us to inform those generations before the decision is made about what we're going to burden them with. I'm a grandparent. One of the things that grandparents are pretty good at thinking about is what's going to happen to my grandchildren. Uh, and I'm prepared to get into a hell of a lot of fights about the interests of my grandchildren. Maybe even more fights than I would have got into about the interests of my kids. Uh, so not telling us what the implications are for future generations, denies those grandparents the opportunity to be able to say, not good enough. A government conducting responsible budgeting by eliminating debt